everyone. Welcome back to Buckeye Football Weekly. I'm Jeff Hogan alongside head coach Jim Tressel. Joining me to talk about the game in Iowa City. And coach, you go out there uh, again on the road, again in a tough place to play, 70,000 plus in Kinnick Stadium, um, causing a little communication problems as they do for other teams as well. But you get there with some questions that you're trying to answer from previous weeks and, and you come out with probably some more questions a little bit after this one. Well, there's no question about it. The big question is, uh, you know, have we figured out yet how to win in the Big Ten? And uh, the answer is no at this point in time. Uh, you know, we came out with the thought in mind that we wanted to make sure that we went after them both run and pass on offense and did a good job of putting pressure on their quarterback uh, on the defensive side. I thought their quarterback did a nice job of handling the pressure and coming up with plays. And, uh, you know, as you're going back and forth in a ball game like that, once I think our guys got on their feet and started moving the ball down and it's 10 nothing game, uh, had a chance to put the, the ball in the end zone and instead we threw an interception and came back out in that second half and turned it over. You're not going to win on the road that way. That's one thing. You're not going to win the Big Ten that way. A lot of time during the day spent uh, chasing Drew Tate, of course. A lot of time uh, on your offensive side trying to figure out as you talked through the playbook uh, and simplifying it a little bit after throwing in some spread uh, from the previous week. You know, try to figure out some things that you're good at and get after them. Well, that's the key. You, know, you first have to figure out who you are and what you want to do and can do and uh, you know it starts up front and you know the thing that uh, uh, I think is the toughest for us to understand right now is uh, you know why aren't we getting a little bit more movement why aren't we making life a little bit easier if you're the guy standing back there passing uh, you know why aren't we creating the situations where we can make some big plays and again that's what life is about continue to work on figuring out those answers and, and we'll get there. All right, well, we'll take a look at the highlights here from Kinnick Stadium. 70,000 plus, a sellout crowd there in a place where the crowd is right on top of you, so it's real loud and noticeable for the players. It really is. It's a fun place to compete, and I think our guys enjoyed that, and uh, here we are uh, throwing the ball down the field. Uh, Santonio Holmes making the first down there. Pickup of 12 yards on a second and 10 play from your own 20-yard line. We go over to offense for Iowa, and here's Drew Tate with a rollout. He had real good patience. Uh, they ran a little boot there, and, and uh, he waited until his guy worked open, and they came up with a first down throw. Clinton Solomon with a catch pickup of 22. Ed Hinkle's going to haul this one in, but he gets hit hard and coughs it up. That was a good job being on the spot there by A.J. Hawk, and we come up with the turnover. Uh, they were moving it down the field, but we held them off and have it on our own 15. Gaining some momentum defensively, hopefully. Stopping the run defensively and trying to get it done with the pass as well. We go to punt formation now. We were hitting the ball there, and good job by Sir Joe Welch. He's done a nice job playing that sniper position and going down and, and uh, you know, creating havoc as he goes. We have certainly seen that before. Good timing on that play, and again, the defense solid. Anthony Schlegel, A.J. Hawk there, uh, making it tough for the Hawkeyes to run. Back for a nice run, and this time a little more yardage gained, 11 yards on that play. A, a nice job cutting back and came over top of one of our people. They're moving it down, and again, a little boot play and uh, good patience by the quarterback and the longer you can keep a play alive the, the more dangerous you are as an offense. Well certainly what Drew Tate does for this ball club at Iowa 11 yards on the touchdown a 7-0 lead there an incomplete pass on that play and we come back with another defensive stop good sack here. Good job there we put a lot of pressure AJ Hawk finally ended up there on the on the uh, sack and they ended up hitting their field goal through and that's a 10-nothing ball game. Yeah, Kyle Slicker from 45 yards, a career long for him, and it is 10-zip on the board. This pass completes Santonio Holmes, pick up a 12. Good job of getting the first down there, and we're starting to move it a little bit here as we go. Lydell Ross on a little uh, lead draw play that uh, got us a few yards as we move along. We're throwing from the shotgun here. You see Tony Gonzalez making the play, and I think the first down uh, on that play. So we're, we're starting to get a little bit of confidence, a little bit of steadiness going back, and a uh, nice catch there by Ryan Hamby uh, as he's going up the field. And, and uh, you know, we're starting to look like an offensive football team. Pretty good movement there but for Antonio Pittman on the run, and, and uh, you know, we're moving the ball down the field toward their goal line. Pittman picks up five there and back to pass again, finding Holmes again, pick up a 14 for number four. Moving the football and guys are hustling, guys are moving down the field and um, here we are in the, in the empty set, end up throwing the football up for grabs and you know we just can't uh, 
you know, it's tough for a, a young football team to handle uh, having some success and then going and making a mistake like that and, and coming up empty. Well, especially uh, towards the end of the half when you go in, and obviously not the best half you've played, but if you can make it 10-3 or 10-7, you go in and say, hey, we're down a touchdown, or we're down three, and look how bad we played, we're hanging. That's right, and you know, and you could really point to that last drive saying, hey, offense, the last time you were on the field, you moved it all the way down the field, you ran, you passed, you did it all, and, and uh, you know, football is such an emotional game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I felt, though, pretty good at the way the guys handled the halftime. They felt like we're only down 10 nothing, and, and we get the ball to start the half, and so let's see what we can go as we head out there and do it. Also, with the continuity uh, that this offense showed during that drive, it hadn't been there before. Uh, six first downs in the first half and five of them on that drive, and, and continuity is that thing that can just be contagious. Well, it's rhythm and it's confidence, and, and uh, you know, it's a belief in, in you yourself can get it done, and uh, then when it ends up in a turnover, I think that's a difficult thing for the guys. A little bit of change up as well uh, in your personnel. John Peterson coming down uh, onto the field. What does that do for the coaches? Just you, you try some things and mix it up? Well, you know, we always say that when things aren't going the way we want them to go, we always check with ourselves first because we need to make improvements as well. Uh, we thought that Jim Bowman and Joe Daniels sitting upstairs together because they're the two that really have the most impact in what mm -hmm. we're doing. Uh, you know, there might be some more continuity and maybe we could get a little bit more consistency from a, a coaching standpoint and uh, bring John down and, and uh, you know, work with the guys like he always does every day in yeah. practice. And uh, it'll be interesting as we talk about how that went to see if that was something that, uh, you know, could be a positive. All right, we'll talk about the second half when we come back here on Buckeye Football Weekly. We'll get the ball to start right after this. We welcome you back to Buckeye Football Weekly. And, Coach, we're talking about uh, an Iowa team with a quarterback that some of your guys know about. Anthony Schlegel takes over for Mike DeAndre in the middle there from Texas, played against him, knows what he's all about, tries to tell the guys, hey, he's going to get out and he's going to make things happen. Um, and that's really a devastating thing for a, for a quarterback to do to defenses. You know you're going to get it all day. Well, no question. And you know, he was impressive to me. Uh, he's a feisty, tough uh, playmaker. Uh, you, you can't get to him. I mean, he's going to come. Even if you hit him one play, he's going to be back the next play. Uh, he was a winner in high school. And uh, you can see him evolving through their films. You know, as yeah. the more he played, uh, the more confidence he got, and, and uh, I think he's going to be a good one. Interesting uh, scenario. A couple of sophomore quarterbacks getting after it here and trying to get through growing pains in both ways there, and the Buckeyes trying to work through it here in the second half. And you get into it here uh, as we start the second half. Second half notwithstanding, we know how it happened, but you, don't, you get the ball back, and you're thinking, okay, guys, this is the emotional turn that we could possibly use. Uh, you know, we chose to take the ball in the mm -hmm. second half. It's interesting, they chose to take the wind. And so we thought, you know, if we could really do a great job against the wind and, and get it back to 10-7, 10-10, and then all of a sudden have the whole fourth quarter with the wind, uh, you know, we, we thought we had some opportunities yeah. there. And, and uh, that's what you have to think about if you want to go out and win, and, and uh, then you have to go out and do it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we got up to a bad start. Yeah, and you talk about the, the emotions of a football game and what an emotional sport it is, and, and you got to give guys credit because they, they keep battling, they keep coming back here, and that is Big Ten football for you, and it has to be that way. As we see Justin Zwick's second play of the second half, puts it on the ground, and the Hawkeyes recover. Now, you know, the thing that our football team has to learn, and, and obviously anyone that has their hands on the ball, is that it's the most prized possession we have. And without it, uh, we're not going to win any games. And, and uh, if we turn it over to them, that's going to be very difficult. And uh, here you see Iowa doing a good job of getting the ball out, mixing it around, throwing the football in the flat there. And, and all of a sudden now it's a 17-point uh, swing when you're playing away from home. and, and uh, they're playing with some confidence now and, and being able to fling it around. And, uh, you know, this was a tough one. Uh, we kind of fell asleep on the backside. Uh, there was a hard play action to the boundary uh, where they had a, a, a tough formation and one-on-one, -on -one and we weren't in very good shape. There you see Antonio Pittman uh, trying to get us going, trying to get a little burst here. Here Troy, Troy Smith, Smith yeah. is in the ball game. Justin Zwick got banged a little bit and. Yeah. and uh, and plus, I think it was time for, you know, uh, Troy to have some opportunity uh, in this ball game. Anthony Schlegel making a nice play there. Uh, Joel Penton in there, working hard at it. Again, another stop by the defense here. Brownlee, the ball carrier. A.J. Hawk coming up there. Guys are getting after it. And, you know, they kept playing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the one thing that, um, you know, 
we better always be able to say is that our guys will never stop playing. Uh, we've just got to play better. Iowa knocking on the door again. Drew Tate uh, with a receiver open in the end zone chooses to take it the hard way and he fights his way in for a touchdown. Hey, you know the, the best quarterbacks are the tough ones. Uh, there's a good there's a good effort by our guys. I think it was Dante Whitner uh, coming through and, and blocking that extra point. Here you see Troy Smith finding Ryan Hamby and uh, you know the guys are scraping at it and scrapping and, and uh, trying to get it done. Pick up of 11 there and then a fourth down play here trying to get the first here in your own territory. Yeah. I think Troy tripped over a pulling lineman yep. and uh, here you see Simon Frazier uh, doing a good job getting after their quarterback and, and uh, force them into a field goal situation and Again, to their credit, they banged it through. Most every opportunity they had, they took advantage of. 42-yard field goal from Slicker, 33 on the board for Iowa at that point. 19 yards complete to Ted Ginn. This is something we can get used to seeing. Yeah, good job by Troy finding the open guy and Teddy making a play here. We're getting pretty good pass protection and Santonio Holmes uh, is, is working up the field with the football. You know, the guys, uh, guys wanted to keep playing. They were anxious to keep going. They'd have stayed all night if the if we had enough time. Here you see Troy making a couple yards uh, with nobody open, which is what you want to do is, is step up and go. Goes for the first and then from the 23-yard line. We saw man coverage there with uh, an outside backer on his tight end with no one in the middle and good job by uh, Troy getting the ball to Rory Nickel and, and uh, you know that was good to get one in there. Obviously not enough, but uh, uh, you know Iowa, the home team, deserved the victory. Yeah, and they got it, and this um, puts the Buckeyes in a situation very unfamiliar with, and you talk about measuring character uh, and checking character of this ball club. It'll be checked once again this week. Well, there's no question about it. You know, when uh, when you've stepped up to the plate three times and, and haven't got it done in the Big Ten, you're obviously not going to be the Big Ten champions. Uh, now you have to find out just how good you're going to get, and, and uh, you know, we've got to make sure we step up to the plate one more time and do a better job while we're there. In trying to uh, get things going your way in the second half, that game just started to tilt towards Iowa as far as field position, um, and they took advantage of it. Their average starting position was on the plus side in, in your territory, and it's tough to get that going because that, that's Ohio State football to try to get it going that way. Well, you know, we're not going to win many games with losing the turnover margin and giving it to them on the 25-yard on the line and that type of thing, and we have to know that Above all else, the most important thing we do is take care of the football, and it, it has such an impact on all phases of our game. It, it does something emotionally to the defense, and obviously it takes a little confidence away from the offense, and, and uh, you have to take good care of the football, and you know, that's, a, that's a growing pain that you know, we need to learn fast. Well, we've got a recent visit with another couple of your buckets.